Welcome to the introduction to rocket trajectories in three dimensions. In this rocket trajectory series, we've gone over the ideal rocket equation derivation, sounding rocket trajectories, which is one dimensional motion, maximum dynamic pressure, or max Q, gravity turn rocket trajectories, which is two dimensional motion, and now we are ready to take the next step into the third dimension. So modeling rocket trajectories in 3D will require knowledge on a number of different calculus, linear algebra, and geometry topics. So once we have a solid understanding of these topics, we can begin to create very exciting simulations of rocket trajectories targeting specific orbital elements like orbital inclination, eccentricity, and right ascension from different launch sites around the world. Like in this simulation where there are two stage rocket trajectories to orbit from Cape Canaveral, Vandenberg Air Force Base, French Guiana, Baikonur Cosmodrome, and Satish Dewan. This is the fifth video in this series of rocket trajectories. And if you haven't seen it already on this channel, I also have the space engineering podcast and I'm making videos in Spanish. So to start from calculus, we need to understand what ordinary differential equations are and how ODE solvers work, specifically how they can solve second order ODEs with a first order solver method, like a runge cut of four five. And in case you haven't seen the last video, this is a slide outlining the ODEs for the gravity turn portion of rocket trajectories, which is modeling Newton's universal law of gravitation, the thrust vector, aerodynamic drag, and here is a derivative of mass with respect to time. For linear algebra and geometry, the first thing we must understand is that 3D vectors can represent a number of things. Specifically for rocket trajectory simulations, they will be representing position, velocity, acceleration, two-dimensional planes, and axes of rotation. For example, the rocket position vector, as shown in the white here, pointing from the center of the Earth to Cape Canaveral, Florida, also represents the local 2D surface plane. Planes can be represented by vectors pointing perpendicular to them, as is shown in the diagram on the top right, and also represents the 3D axis of rotation used to calculate the launch azimuth vector from local north. We will also need to understand inertial and non-inertial reference frames. Since we define points on Earth in latitude and longitude coordinates, we must be able to 1. convert latitude longitude coordinates to Earth-centered Earth-fixed rectangular coordinates, and 2. convert Earth-centered Earth-fixed coordinates to Earth-centered inertial coordinates. And since Earth is rotating, in order to calculate the inertial velocity that a rocket has when it's sitting on the launch pad, we can use the cross product between Earth's angular velocity vector and the position vector of the launch site. And as you've probably heard before, the closer the launch site is to the equator, the larger the inertial velocity, since the cross product is a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are. So the more perpendicular that they are, the larger the magnitude of the cross product. Next up in this series is a relationship between launch azimuth, orbital inclination, and launch site latitude, where we will be going over how to calculate the pitch over maneuver thrust acceleration vector to align the rocket to the proper launch azimuth to achieve the target orbital inclination, and we'll also be discussing why the minimum inclination a rocket can achieve is equivalent to the latitude coordinate that they are launching from. So be sure to give a video a like and a subscribe if you found it useful, and let me know if you have any questions or comments about this video, and we'll see you in the next one.